Hey everyone, so today I'm taking a look at two backpacks. The first one is the Errant Backpack from Boundary Supply. And then the second one here is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack uh, V2. So full disclosure, uh, I paid full price for the Peak Design one here. And the Boundary Supply Errant Backpack on the left here, this was provided to me by uh, Boundary Supply. So they sent me this to take a look at. And I have used the Peak Design Backpack for about a year now, uh, I've taken it everywhere and it still looks great. Uh, for the Boundary Supply one, I've used it for a week. I took it on a hike, I went to a beach. So these are my impressions of these two backpacks and we will do a head-to-head -head comparison. But to start, let's take a look at the Boundary Supply Errant Backpack. All right, so first up, let's start with an exterior tour of the Errant Backpack from Boundary Supply. So firstly, I think it's quite a stylish looking backpack. So uh, when I put this on, uh, my friends were asking me what kind of backpack is that? It looks pretty cool. And I agree, I think it does look pretty cool. It looks very sleek and understated and kind of stealth look, especially in this black uh, finish here. The Boundary Supply logo is up here. It's kind of like this glossy kind of A kind of symbol. Um, so this is the, the front, uh, it's glossy, it's water resistant. Now on the back, obviously you have your straps. These are just your straps here. And speaking of straps, this bag has straps everywhere. So if you like your sternum strap, you have that already. And the closure is like a magnetic closure, which is really cool. So if you just put it on top and it just clicks right in. Now, if you're like me and you kind of don't use the sternum strap too much, that's okay. You can remove it very easily. So here, basically just raise it up, slip it underneath this piece here, and then off comes the entire strap. So you can do the same thing for the the clip on the other side. So yeah, you can do exactly the same thing, lift it up a little bit, poke it through there, and then now you have removed the sternum strap. Now, there is one other strap that I've already removed because I'm not a big fan of straps, uh, especially when it's using as the day-to-day -day backpack. If I'm going on a hike, for example, then yes, maybe the sternum strap, maybe a waist strap would be very useful. Uh, it does come with a waist strap. So this is the waist strap that it comes with. And again, it is removable. So this is the clip that you get and it basically just hooks into the loops down here. So I will just demonstrate that for you here. So this is the, the loop at the bottom where it goes and you hook this in, you clip it in like so, the metal latch, just push it in and there you have it. So you do the same thing on the other side. Put it through the loop and then put the metal latch over the hook, your waist strap. And now this waist strap, it's not held magnetically. Uh, it's just a regular clip, as you see here. Basically, you just press it and it unlatches. And then if you want to put it back in, just position it back in and then click. And there you go. Now, apart from those two removable ones, the sternum one and the waist one, there are several unremovable straps or permanent ones. The first one is this one that is on the back here. So this strap is actually attached behind here and you can't actually take this off. You can unhook it uh, and then maybe you can hide it somewhere else, maybe hook it down here or something. Uh, I'm not sure what this is for, but if you do leave it in this kind of default location and you wear the backpack, it's actually fine, you don't feel that at all. Even though this is like a metal uh, bit of hardware here, when you put it on, you don't feel it at all. Uh, this might be for strapping in longer items. So there is a carry handle on the side here. So maybe if you are carrying it on its side, you could potentially strap something in the middle here and hold it this way. Uh, but there are other anchoring hooks as well. So you can anchor it maybe here or on the other side. So if you need to hold something. Uh, it could potentially stretch all the way around to the front and maybe hook onto this one as well. So it's just another way for you to carry something on the outside of the backpack. Now, apart from that one, there is this strap here on the side as well. This is for your longer external carry items on the side. There is a side pocket. So I usually put my tripod here or maybe a, a drink bottle. A drink bottle should just fit fine. If it's a tripod that's a bit taller, you can have this strap to help you secure it. So if it's a bit longer, just basically wrap this around it and there is a place for you to hook this just there. So next, let's take a look at the openings on this backpack. So the most obvious one is the flap at the front here. Now this is held down by two kind of magnetic clasps or clips, I'm not sure what they're called, but to open it, you kind of have to pull this down a little bit and then these two 
clips or buckles become undone and they are held magnetically. So you can kind of just drop it and then it will clip back in. Uh, but sometimes it's not quite secure. So you have to you know, make sure that they are clipped properly and then now it's in. To remove it, you pull down a little bit and then these pop up. Now on this errant backpack, there is an additional zipper here. So to open this, you just unzip it and then now you have access to the inside of the bag. So that's one way of getting to the inside of the bag. The next way is the entire back part of this backpack can be unzipped so that you can actually open this and fold it flat uh, or open it entirely. So to do that, there is a zipper which goes all the way around and you start by going from the top and going around the side all the way to the bottom and same for here. Now there is a little clip here. This clip kind of you know, makes it a little bit harder for you to zip it all the way down and it is magnetic. So this just makes it you know, a bit more secure in case you don't wanna open up the entire bag by accident. But you can just unclip it just by lifting it up and then you can zip it all the way down and now suddenly your bag is completely open. Now I have my jacket in here just to give it some structural rigidity from before, but this is what it looks like if you have the bag completely open. Now, since we have the bag open, it's a good time to talk about the inside of the bag. Now, this looks a bit peculiar because this top half here is actually part of the same section. So if you put your hand through here, if I put my hand through, you'll see that my hand can go straight in and then it comes straight out the back here. So this top partition only cuts off the top half of the bag uh, and the bottom half is just one giant open cavity. If you like pockets, this bag has plenty, especially on the inside. With this open cavity, you see that there's little mesh pockets on the side here, mesh pockets here. Uh, there's also a pocket up here, so you can unzip this and put any, you know, any dongles or anything you wanna put up here as well. Uh, on the back, this is the laptop or computer kind of section. So you have your larger laptop compartment up here. It's got a magnetic uh, clip, which just clips in like this. There is also a smaller compartment just in front of that, which is here. This could be for like an iPad or maybe a, just a smaller laptop. There are other two pockets here. So if you have a charger, for example, you could chuck it in here or some like cables or maybe a mouse or something that could go in there as well. If we go to the front again, so in the front here, there is a zipper. So this is kind of like a semi-hidden pocket, which goes about about to about here, that's how deep it goes. So if you have you know, any flat kind of things, maybe a passport or something, you could put it in here. Now, speaking of secret compartments, there is one secret compartment on the back of the backpack. Can you see where it is? You might not be able to see it, uh, but it is here on the side where the handle is. So there is a secret compartment here. If you unzip it, again, this can fit maybe your passport, maybe your wallet. It goes to about here, that's how deep it is. Um, but you probably want to fit like a flat thing. Anything that's bulky would not fit in there. There is another pocket on the side here. If you open this, there are even more organization compartments. So if you have pens, for example, you can put them in there. Again, other cables, any other, you know, random doodads, you can put them all in here and they can be nicely separated. There is an additional clip here. So you can buy a key ring accessory where you can clip your keys. And also there is a pass through hole as well. You see here, so if you have uh, maybe your ba battery bank on the side and you wanna charge your laptop on the inside or vice versa, uh, you can pass a cable or something through here. Now moving on to my favorite things about this backpack. The first one and probably my most favorite one is that there is a wet compartment at the bottom of the, the backpack here. Now they call it wet compartment because that's, it's separate from the main compartment of the backpack. So if you have any dirty clothes, wet shoes, you know, smelly shoes or whatever, you can shove it in the bottom. So how does that work? So here there is another zipper and it's got a nice, I don't know, a sheath, I guess, for the zipper uh, tag or head. So to get this out, it's a little bit, uh, clunky but you get your nail in there and then you can start you pull the zipper head out and then you can just unzip this bottom part and suddenly there is another compartment here now it looks like another compartment but you it does share the same space as the main body of the bag so if you do put something in there you will be taking up space up underneath the bag 
But the good thing is this is a waterproof compartment. So if you have shoes, you can shove it in there. As you can see, it's quite deep. You can shove it in there, put your shoes in there, zip it back up, and you don't have to worry about getting the rest of your bag dirty. Now, what does that look like on this side? So this is kind of that waterproof compartment here. It does take up, I don't know, about a third, up to a third of your bag. So if you do have large shoes, you gotta think about that. Uh, and there is a bit of a downside. If your bag is full, what you'll end up finding is that all your stuff is you know, on the bottom because of gravity. And then when you try to open up the bottom part and try to put your shoes in, you kind of have to force all the contents out of the way. Uh, good idea. Uh, I still like it very much, but something to consider that you, you know, this is taking up the same space as the internals of the backpack. The next thing I really like about this backpack is the straps. The, the straps, they have this little, uh, I don't know what you call this, this little piece here, so that any excess strap won't just be dangling around like this. You can drag this all the way to the end and suddenly your straps are really nice and neat. All right, next up we have the Peak Design Everyday Backpack. I think a lot of people are familiar with this backpack, but I'm gonna go through the outside and inside just quickly to refresh everyone's memory. Uh, on the outside, you have this kind of almost, I don't know, I don't know how to describe this. It's kind of rough feeling material. It's not as glossy, but it is still water repellent. So I have just taken this on like a Disney ride where you get drenched and all my stuff inside was completely fine. Now on the Peak Design, it has the similar zippers. So these are again, the, the weather resistant zippers. So I'll, let me just bring the errant backpack back up here. So it's very similar in terms of the zipper. So you can see here, it's the same kind of weather resistant zipper. You know, water is not gonna get into that, into that zipper there. So it's like kind of got this plastic ceiling. Now the Peak Design backpack is more kind of rigid. Uh, it's currently empty, there's nothing inside and it's kind of holding its shape uh, and it does stand up uh, kind of on its own, which I like. Uh, it does look a little bit shorter and a bit chubbier uh, because it kind of is. It's not as tall. Uh, this is a 20 liter version and I believe the Aaron backpack is 24 from memory. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, the specs are on their website. So let's start the tour of this backpack from the, the rear, the back here. Uh, these straps, these are really comfortable. They're actually really soft. I don't know what they did here, but this is noticeably softer than the straps on the Aaron backpack. Uh, same for the, the back part here. And they do have this kind of uh, multi-angle kind of, you know, hinge thing up here where the straps rotate, which is also very nice. Uh, and the best part is that these straps are held down magnetically. So if you just put it down there, uh, if, you, if you wanna just, you know, carry your backpack like this, the straps get held down. So there's a magnet here and they won't dangle around, which is, which is actually brilliant. Uh, I really like this design. Uh, on the outside, it looks you know, slightly cleaner. There's not you know, as many openings that you can see. They're kind of well hidden. Uh, they still have anchor hooks or anchor points for you know, external carry if you need. And all the external carry straps, I've actually taken them off and they're actually hidden in these pockets over here. So this is one of the external carry straps. Uh, it's actually tied in on the inside here. You can remove it. It's just clipped onto a, another hook on the inside of this side pocket here, but you can remove it. Uh, but I, usually I just tuck it in here and I just leave it there. Uh, but you can take it out and then hook it onto any number of these hooks outside. Uh, if you have like a taller tripod, for example, you could hook it up here and then suddenly you can secure it with this strap. So in terms of opening and closing this bag, uh, there's two you know, very obvious ways of doing it. You can see there's a zipper on this side and also a zipper on this side. So the bag does open either side and it just, you know, straight through. Uh, obviously there is a top uh, opening here. This is their mag latch, I think that's what it's called. But you can uh, basically choose a notch here and you can either expand or contract the bag as you need. So if you close it on the very, on the lowest setting, which is down here, then suddenly you kind of have less space. It's, it's slightly shorter and more compact, but if suddenly you have more things, you can undo this and then you can clip it up onto a higher setting, let's say up here, then suddenly you have a little bit more space. The bag kind of expands upwards a bit and then you can shove in maybe an extra jacket or something in there. The Peak Design backpack does not have a zipper up here. It's just an open flap like this. Now it does fold a little bit like this. So if you do close this, uh, the water is really not gonna go in there unless you have some sort of hose that is firing upwards under the, the lid. So the other opening is on the side. You can unzip that and basically 
open up the bag like this. You can unzip the other side as well. And now suddenly the bag is completely open and then you can put whatever you need in there. Now at the start, uh, I said I was gonna compare these bags and as I was doing it, I realized this may not be a, a completely fair comparison because the Peak Design backpack is kind of marketed as a semi camera bag as well, which is why it's you know, more rigid and it kind of stands up on its own and it is more padded overall. So you can see how thick this, this bag is. There is some sort of padding all the way around it. So it is a bit pricier. This is, I think it's double the price of the Errant backpack. So it may not be a fair comparison, but the Errant backpack does come with modular accessories that allow it to become like a, a, a camera bag. So they have clips inside the bag, which I'll show you later, that you can clip accessories onto and then convert it into a camera bag. But as it is, if you just buy the Errant backpack, it's not a camera bag. Uh, whereas the Peak Design backpack is kind of a camera bag from the beginning, even though they mark it as you know, an everyday backpack. Now, the, the cool thing about the Peak Design backpack is that they have these shelves. You can unvelcro this shelf and move it up and down, or you can unvelcro this shelf and move it up and down. You can make partitions, you can fold this up and then put like, you know, your lens here, for example, or maybe your drone down here. So it keeps things separated uh, and protected. Now, in terms of pockets, the Errant backpack has way more pockets. Uh, and if you need to stay organized, that's probably the backpack to go. Uh, if you have a lot of cables, a lot of pens, the new version, the V2 Peak Design backpack basically doesn't have any organization at all. You have this little pocket up here. Uh, it's held down magnetically, which is cool. But inside this pocket, there's nothing. It's just a big empty space. Uh, same for down here. If you open this up, there are a few pockets. There's two pockets on the back there. I hope you can see there. There's two pockets on the back, um, but I don't end up using it. I just basically end up using it as a giant pocket where I put cables. And the same thing on the other side here. So same thing here, there's a big pocket up here, and then there's another pocket here, and then I just have some cash, and then another uh, dongle down here. And then I don't use, I don't really use these, these pockets up here. And there's, that's actually it in terms of organization. There's not much you can do. Uh, there is a secret pocket here, where you can put maybe like a passport or something. But again, I don't use this at all. This is currently empty. And then finally, the last pocket on the Peak Design backpack is up here. So this is kind of like the laptop compartment. Uh, but before that, there is this giant pocket up here. This is kind of my go-to pocket where I dump everything. I have adapters, I have my lip balm, I have a little pocket with um, a hex key for my tripod. And then I have things like uh, you know, USB adapter, uh, cable, a card reader. And apart from that, this is the laptop compartment. Now the laptop compartment is expandable, which is pretty cool. You can lift this up and make it deeper or shallower depending on how big your laptop is. And on top of that, there is a iPad compartment or a smaller laptop compartment, which is on top of the laptop one. So if you do want to carry two laptops or maybe a big one and a small one, this can actually take that. I've tried a 15 inch MacBook and a 13 inch MacBook all in one bag, which is pretty good. All right, so now it is time for the head-to-head -head comparison between the Errant backpack on the left and the Peak Design backpack on the right. Now, as I said, may not be a completely fair comparison because this thing is way more expensive. But I mentioned before that there are clips in here and this one that can convert it into a camera bag. So let's take a quick look at that before we continue. Uh, so you unzip the whole bag and you'll notice, I have my jacket in here, but let's remove that. You'll notice that there is some Velcro here. So this is there so that you can buy one of their modular packs and then basically stick it down here. And then that will give you more kind of compartmentalization. I think that's how you say it. Uh, basically you can put your fragile stuff inside another pack and then stick it down there and this will keep it in place. And at the top here, I'm not sure if I can get a good view of this. Maybe if I open the top, uh, this might be a little bit better. So at the top here, there are these clips. So again, you can attach something here and then make another kind of compartment near the top. Now on their website, they have a whole bunch of different modular items you can buy to deck this thing out and convert it into a camera bag. And once you do that, you get fairly close, maybe even more expensive than this one. But check out their website uh, if that's something you wanna do. Now back to the actual comparison between these two. So the first thing you notice is that this one is a bit taller. And yes, I checked on their website, it is 24 liters, so it is a little bit bigger than the Peak Design backpack. Uh, another thing you notice is that there is a zipper. So if you are concerned about getting stuff wet 
and the Peak Design backpack. This one is definitely going to stay dry. There's an actual full zipper here, so water is not going to get inside. But I did notice that opening this top flap is a little bit harder than opening the flap on the Peak Design. That may be because I'm just used to the Peak Design, but I found that this double, this double clip is kind of hard to get open. Sometimes, you know, you might, you might unlock one and then you can't get the other one. And also closing it can sometimes be hard. Sometimes you lock one and then the other one is still unlocked. But I guess after a while you get used to it, but it's very much a two-handed operation. It's almost impossible to open this, you know, with, with one hand, unless you do one buckle at a time which is, you know, a bit slower. And after that, you have to unzip it. And this is the opening. The opening does feel a little bit smaller. Uh, if you want to get something large out of here, I think you tend to have to default back to the rear and open it up larger to get, you know, any larger items in or out. For comparison, this is kind of the opening on the Peak Design backpack. It seems a little bit larger because it kind of folds. Uh, this means you, you kind of do have the entire cross section of the bag uh, available to you in this kind of opening. And, but of course there is no zipper, so if you are really scared of getting water in, you know, maybe this one's a bit better. All right, now let's move on to the laptop compartment. So the laptop compartment is kind of a separate piece for the Aaron backpack, and it does have similar properties or similar features as the Peak Design. It does have two layers. It has the larger uh, laptop up here and then the smaller one here, and they're both really deep. I think you can fit like a full-on 16-inch MacBook Pro in here, no problems. Uh, with the Peak Design, you can't open up the whole thing, but this opening is plenty enough. Uh, and the good thing about the Peak Design is that this laptop compartment is adjustable. You can make it shorter if you need to. Uh, it, it, you can make it you know, longer, but the longest is obviously to the bottom of the bag. But let's say you have a, a small 13-inch MacBook or maybe even the really small MacBook Airs. I don't think they sell them anymore. But if you have a really small laptop and you know you don't want to dig down to get the laptop, you can make this actually shorter so that the laptop sits a bit higher so you can easily take it out from the laptop compartment. The two greatest advantages of the Aaron backpack over the Peak Design backpack, uh, I think, is the pouch at the bottom or the wet area at the bottom. That's probably my favorite thing about this backpack is that there is a wet compartment down here. This, this opens up and then you can put your shoes and whatever in there and it's beautiful. It keeps everything sealed and keeps the main compartment clean. The Peak Design does not have that. Uh, if you try to put anything wet in there, you're gonna stain the inside of your backpack pretty bad. Uh, basically what I end up doing is I have to bring a plastic bag to wrap my shoes or whatever if I want to put it in this Peak Design backpack. So yes, the, the best thing about the Aaron backpack, at least in my opinion, is the bottom wet area. Uh, and the next best thing I mentioned before is these straps, it has these holders, right? Every backpack should have that. This is like expensive backpacks here. These are like hundreds of dollars. Uh, and the Peak Design doesn't actually have that. So I actually had to sew this on myself. You see this, this little bit of elastic here. I basically had to go to a dollar shop, find some elastic and then sew this on myself. By default, this is what it looks like. If you are walking around with your Peak Design backpack, this you know, thing will be just dangling everywhere, which kind of sucks. You're paying a premium for these backpacks and it doesn't even have this, this little bit of elastic or plastic, which kind of sucks. Now, there are some advantages of the Peak Design backpack over the Aaron backpack. The first one is it's a camera bag. It's more rigid, it's more padded. So you feel a bit safer putting things in there and you know that they're protected. Uh, it's got the compartment kind of shelving here, which is great. So you can create your own compartments on the fly and then protect whatever you need. But I think the best thing that this backpack has that the Errant kind of doesn't have are these straps. I don't know what Peak Design did, but these straps are very, very comfortable. Now, if you look at the Errant one here, you, you obviously can't tell the feel of the strap over the camera, but I can tell you this thing is way softer than this strap here. Um, I'm not sure what material Peak Design have used, but this thing feels very soft, almost like, almost like a hard memory foam. And this extends to the back as well. So this also feels very soft. Whereas the Aaron backpack just feels kind of rigid. It feels kind of like, almost like a plastic bag. I don't know how to describe it, but the same material is on the back here. And you'll notice that the straps, this is kind of a bit further apart and a bit wider. And I wore this uh, at the beach on a trek and I noticed that my back did get tied a little bit quicker on the Aaron backpack 
Whereas the Peak Design, I could wear for a longer time and I really didn't feel much strain on my back. I think it might be down to these hinges that they swivel. So uh, if uh, Boundary Supply, if you are listening, please copy whatever Peak Design did here, please. This, this, this thing is good. Now the next advantage that the Peak Design has over the Errant backpack is that there are two side pockets. So there is a side pocket here and there's also a side pocket on this side. So, you know, if you're carrying two tripods or a tripod and a water bottle, uh, which is quite common, then you have kind of two external pockets that you can use. Whereas the Aaron backpack currently only has one. So this is the only side pocket that you got. On the other side, there's nothing. Uh, there is this kind of side pocket here, but I don't think you're gonna fit uh, a bottle or anything in there. At least I don't think you'd want to anyway. So that's another thing to consider if you are carrying lots of external items. There is a luggage handle pass-through on the Peak Design. So you can lift this up and basically thread uh, this over your luggage handle and then you can put it on the roller case and just roll it along. The Errant backpack doesn't have this, but I noticed that there is an additional compartment here. So instead of having the pass-through where you can put the handle, there's an additional kind of pocket here which is held down by a Velcro. So if you want uh, like I mentioned before, the Errant backpack is for compartments and for pockets. If you have a lot of little things you're carrying, the Errant backpack is the one to go for. This thing will keep you organized no matter what. All right, final thoughts and maybe a bit of conclusion here. Both backpacks are actually really good. Uh, Comfort-wise, the Peak Design backpack is still better. I don't know what magic they did, but this is still the more comfortable backpack. Uh, Size-wise, the Errant backpack does have a bit larger capacity. Uh, and it does have that wet compartment at the bottom, which I absolutely love, and I wish this backpack had, but it doesn't. Now, design-wise, that's subjective. If you like the stealth look, I think the Boundary Supply Aaron backpack is the one for you. This looks way more stealth, and it looks very sleek. It actually has a slimmer kind of profile. It's not as, as chunky. This thing just looks like a fat boy. This thing is fat and chunky. But it's fat and chunky because it's padded. So it has lots of padding. It's great camera back. Uh, if that's what you're carrying, if you're carrying fragile stuff, uh, this one's to go. But you can upgrade the Aaron backpack to get similar or maybe even better camera protective kind of you know, qualities with the, with the upgrades and the modular kits. So if you are thinking about decking out your backpack, making it modular, make, making sure that you can you know, kind of change it to the need that, you're, that you want or to the activity that you're doing, then the Aaron backpack uh, is the one to go for. Anyway, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.